Hi, and welcome to Lesson 8.2. Today we will be multiplying polynomials and factoring polynomials by using the GCF. And the GCF is just the greatest common factor. Let's begin by multiplying polynomials. If I asked you to multiply the expressions that you see here, I bet you would know exactly what to do. I bet that you would apply the distributive property. For sure, because you've done this before. But what you didn't know is that you're actually multiplying a monomial by a binomial because you didn't know those vocabulary words before. But that's what you were doing. So I just want you to take a moment and see if you can multiply these monomials by the binomials that are in parentheses using the distributive property. Pause the video now and give it a try. OK, let's take a look and see how you did. Did you get the same answers as I did? Take a moment to check your work. You also want to check that you have each of your final answers in standard form. Do you have the term that has the highest power first? And if there's in any cases where you can combine like terms, you want to be sure that you do that too. OK, let's try some more examples. Here, we have a monomial, and we're multiplying it by a trinomial just by using the distributive property. So take a moment, pause the video, and give it a try. OK, let's check and see how you did. Did you get the same trinomial that I did circled in blue? How about for number two? Did you get the same trinomial circled that I have in red? And for number three, check your answer that I have in green. Take a moment here to see if you had the right answer. And if you didn't, take a look back through my work and see if you can find your mistake. When we're multiplying polynomials, especially when we have a monomial and we're multiplying it by either a trinomial or a binomial, we're just using the distributive property. OK, let's take a look at factoring. In order to factor a polynomial, we have to be able to pull out or recognize the GCF, the greatest common factor. So let's give that a try in just some numbers and variables. This is just review, and then we're going to apply it next. So let's take a look at the number 25 and 45. What is the greatest common factor in 25 and 45? Think about factors of 25. That would be 1 times 25 and then 5 times 5. So there's only three factors for 25. And if we think of the factors in 45, we have 1 times 45. We also have 2, oh, not 2, we have 3 times 15. And then we have 5 times 9. So much more factors. <laughs> this is a terrible 3. There we go, 3. Um, that has more factors than 25. But we can see that they have a couple factors in common. But the one that's the greatest factor that they have in common is the factor of 5. So the GCF would just be 5. OK, now let's look at x and x squared. The only factor of x is just x. But x squared has two factors, x times x. So what is the greatest? number of x's that they both have in common. Well, the greatest number of x's that they both have in common is just 1x. So the GCF would just be x. All right, let's take a look at 25x and 45x. Well, we know that the greatest common factor of 25 and 45 is equal to 5. And the greatest common factor of x and x squared is just x. So the GCF of 25x and 45x squared would just be 5x. OK, lastly, let's take a look at 5x cubed, 25x squared, and 45x. Let's take a look at the numbers, 5, 25, and 45. What's the greatest common factor that they all have? And that would be 5. Then if we look at the variables, x to the third power, that's x times x times x. x to the second power is x times x. And then x here is just x. That's the, that's the only factor. So what is the greatest number of x's that they all have in common? Well, they all have one x in common. That's the most number of x's that they all three have in common. So the GCF would again be 5x. OK, so this is just review on finding the greatest common factor. Now let's take a look at how it applies.
to factor polynomials, we want to pull out the greatest common factor. And by pulling out the greatest common factor, we're actually pulling out a monomial. So it's kind of like thinking of undoing the distributive property. So in our last example, we looked at 5x cubed, 25x squared, and 45x. Now, of those three what terms, what is the greatest common factor? Well, we determined that already. It was 5x. So we want to figure this monomial, 5x, what would we need to multiply it by to get the product that you see here? So I think when you're factoring, you're coming up with two things that multiply together to get a product. This right here is our product, our final, our final polynomial. So what are the factors of that? Well, one factor is 5x, but what is the other factor? So we're really just undistributing or pulling out the GCF and undistributing. So let's give it a try here. Okay, I want you to think 5x times what will give us this very first term? What would we have to multiply 5x by? Well, we'd have to multiply 5x by x to the second power for us to get 5x to the third power. Now, what would we have to multiply 5x by to get the second term? which is 25x to the second power. Well, we'd have to take 5x and multiply it by another 5x. And now for the last term, we would have to take 5x and multiply it by what to get 45x? Well, we would have to just multiply it by, by 9, right? So I'm going to erase my work so that you can see what I did here. Oop, kind of erase the 2 there a little bit. I'll put that back on there in just a moment. Okay, so that was a 2 here, and this was a 9. Okay, so now if you take a look, we've got two factors. We've got first a monomial, and then inside the parentheses we have a trinomial. So these are the two factors that multiply together to give us the product that you see above. How do we get these two factors? we pulled out the GCF in front and that became our monomial. And then we just undid the distributive property. Because if you think about this, if you were to do the distributive property, multiplying this mon monomial by everything in the parentheses, you get right back to the original polynomial, wouldn't you? So we're just really undoing the distributive property. Let's try this again in a second example. Okay, we've got 6x to the fourth, negative 15x to the third. Here we got four terms in this polynomial. We want to come up with the factors of the polynomial. So what a monomial times another polynomial. So we want to pull out the GCF. So take a look at the numbers, 6, 15, 12, and 9. What is the greatest common factor of all of those numbers? I bet that you could agree that that is 3. Okay, now let's look at all of the variables x to the fourth, that's x, x, x times x. x to the third is x times x times x. x to the second is x times x, and then we just have a little x. So looking here at these four, what is the greatest number of x's that they all have in common? Well, they only all have in common one x. So that would be the greatest common factor, one x. Okay, now we are ready, whoops, we are ready with our greatest common factor of 3x to now come up with the polynomial that multiplies by this, mon this monomial to get our final result. I think I'm going to need to put this parentheses a little bit further over. We kind of got a big one here. Okay, so this first term right here, 6x to the fourth power. 3x times what is going to give us 6x to the fourth power? Well, that would be 2x to the third. You have to kind of think about your um, exponent rules, right? x to the first times x to the third gives us x to the fourth. Okay, so that was our first term. Now our second term, we want to think, how are we going to get this next term? 3x times what is going to give us negative 15x to the third? Well, that would be negative 5. 3 times negative 5 will give us the 15. 
and x times x squared will give us x to the third power. So that's our second. Now our third term that we have, and that's this positive 12x squared. So 3x times what is going to give us positive 12x squared? Well, the number would have to be positive 4, and x times another x would give us the x squared. And now we're finally ready for our last term. Our last term is positive 9x. So 3x times what is going to give us positive 9x? And that would be positive 3. We would not need an x because we already had an x out in the monomial. So erasing here. Now what we did here is we factored out the greatest common factor and we ended up with a monomial multiplied by a polynomial. We've got two factors. The first one is 3x. And the second one is inside the parentheses there. Now notice when you look in the parentheses with these four terms, none of them should have any other common factors because we pulled out the greatest common factor in front. So if you look at the four terms inside the parentheses and you see that there is a common factor, that tells you right there that you didn't quite get the entire greatest common factor or the GCF pulled out in the front. Okay, let's try a third one. Okay, so we've got four terms. So we got a polynomial. Let's look at the just look at finding what the greatest common factor is. Let's just look at the numbers: 21, 7, 42, and 14. Of those four numbers, what is the greatest common factor? I bet you could agree with me that it is 7. Okay, now that I have that, I want to look at the variables then. So let's look at just the x, x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, and x to the second. What is the greatest number of x's that they all have in common? Well, here this is five x's, here there's four x's, here there's three x's, and here there's two. So what's the biggest number or greatest number of x's that they all have in common? That would be two, because they all have two x's in common. So that's x squared. Okay, now let's take a look at the other variable. That's y. Here we have y to the third, y to the second, y, and no y. Well, remember they all all the terms have to have this has a, have to have a common factor if we're going to say it's the greatest common factor. And because the last term doesn't have a y, there's no common factor of y. So we can't pull out a y. Okay, so we got GCF, and that is 7x squared. So I'm going to pull that out in front, 7x squared. And then I got to decide what's the other factor. I got my monomial, and my monomial that I pulled out right here is the GCF. So now I got to figure out what is the other factor. So we're going to undo the distributive property. Here's the first term. So 7x squared times what is going to give us 21x to the fifth, y to the third? Well, 7 times 3 would give us the 21. And if I already have x squared, I'm going to need an x cubed, and I'm going to need a y cubed. And that's going to multiply this. These two terms would multiply together to give me the one that I start with. Okay, so we're just kind of undoing distributive property. We've got this. That was a 3 that I kind of erased there. There we go. Okay, so now I'm ready for the next term right here. So 7x squared times what is going to give me positive 7? Well, that's just going to be 1. So I don't need a 1. I don't need a coefficient. But x squared times x squared will give me x to the fourth. But then I also have to multiply it by y to the second power. Okay, so I've got the next term. All right, now I'm going for this one. So 7x squared times what is going to give me negative 42? Well, that's going to be negative 6 will give me the negative 42. If I already have x squared, I'm going to need another x to get x cubed, and then I'm going to need a y. Okay. Then the last one, negative 14. 7 times negative 2 will give you negative 14. And then if I already have an x squared, I don't need any other x to multiply it by. So it's just negative 2. 
So I'm going to erase my work here. And I'm going to actually pull this parentheses a little bit closer. And now I'm done. Now look in the parentheses. Do you see any other common factors within those four terms that we forgot to pull out? Nope, it doesn't look like it. So I've, I've completely factored. I pulled out a monomial in the front that was the GCF. And then I have my polynomial in the parentheses that I multiply by. So this is how you factor pull it by pulling out the GCF. Okay, so in summary, take a moment here to maybe pause the video and write this down. When we're multiplying a monomial by a polynomial, all we're doing is applying the distributive property. And then we kind of did the opposite. We said, okay, now we're going to factor it. So then we had to first find the GCF, and we pulled that out in front. That was our monomial. And then we had to undo the distributive property. And that's how we factored. Thanks for joining me.